What is up YouTube? This is T Quentin One coming at you with another video and today I'm going to talk to you about a cure for wellness. A movie I was pretty excited for, although it just missed landing on my most anticipated of the year list. So it's two years in a row now. Last year it was Ten Cloverfield Lane, now it's this movie. I was excited for it mainly because of the director Gore Verbinski, who I'm a giant fan of and whose return to horror genre seemed to be just what the doctor ordered. To be honest, I thought it was pretty good, except when it wasn't. Uh, Verbinski said he wanted to make the movie feel like a bad dream, and it often does. That's the biggest positive. When it works, it can be really effective. Scenes like the opening, the dentist scene, or the bridge scene are both memorable and disturbing and really do capture that bad dream kind of sense. And the characters of this movie, while highly archetypal, shrewd, ambitious financier, creepy German doctor, and young, naive girl, I thought the actors filled their roles quite well, especially Dane DeHaan. This guy just keeps impressing me with every movie he makes. Jason Isaacs was pretty good too, and it, to be honest, it was just cool to see him again. He hasn't been in anything in a while. And Mia Goth was decent as Hannah. The movie also just looks gorgeous. Nobody knows how to shoot a horror film quite like Verbinski. There are many echoes of the ring in this movie, mainly in the visuals, and the composition and cinematography were just fucking stellar. And I thought the soundtrack was pretty good as well. That little song that kept recurring throughout the movie did kind of get under my skin, and I enjoyed that. Let's talk about the flaws, and there are quite a few. Starting with, this is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just kind of seems bizarre for the hell of it, instead of actually having anything meaningful to say. And while I've said, when the film works, it can be really effective. When it doesn't, however, this movie is downright laughable. The perfect example of this scene is the heavily advertised isolation tank scene. Uh, there are two things going on here, the stuff inside the tank and the stuff outside of the tank. The stuff inside the tank was great, it was unnerving, it was tense, and the stuff outside of the tank is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. And the movie does try to make you feel uncomfortable, I get that, but there are times when it just goes so over the top that it just feels tasteless. Again, sometimes this works, you get stuff like the dentist scene. Other times you get shit like the bar scene or the pool scene, and that just left a bad taste in my mouth. And I know the mindset for people going into this movie, hell, I'm guilty of it too, is what's the twist? What's the twist? What's this place's dark secret? I'm not going to spoil what the twist is. All I'm going to say is it's fucking stupid. It's ridiculous. About halfway through this movie, it just goes so off the rails, and it only gets more ludicrous as it goes along. And, you know, when it started, I was like, this is exactly what I wanted. And then as soon as Dane DeHaan goes downstairs, it just completely loses itself. And, well, I've brought up a couple times there's lots of isolated scenes that work. It never congeals into anything. It just feels like a grab bag of random creepy scenarios. And the movie can be unnerving at times, but it just isn't that scary. I saw this movie last night and slept like a baby afterwards. So all in all, I think some of the press is a little too harsh, especially Angry Joe. Uh, but A Cure for Wellness is not the movie I wanted it to be. It's not horrible, and I'm still going to give it a 6.5 out of 10, but I can't recommend that you rush out and see it. This is T-Quit 1, signing out.